You're listening to Pack Dynamics, a Fandom on the Rocks podcast. Hello, welcome to Pack Dynamics, a Fandom on the Rocks podcast. I am Emily. And I'm Allison. Hello, how are you doing? <sighs> it's been a rough couple of days, but I'm doing better. Just everything is so much, but it yeah. is not permanent. And talking to friends really, really helps. And having a really supportive husband at home has been unbelievably amusing. And so I'm just, I'm trying my best, trying my best, making a lot of lemonade for a festival that's in town. <laughs> so much lemonade. So literally when life gives you lemons. It gives me limes right now, but yes, the, the point still stands. <laughs> you are literally <laughs> making lemonade. I am making so much lemonade. It's delicious. Apparently it's been selling out like hotcakes. No, it's been selling out like vodka lemonade on a hot summer day. Perfect. And so it's very, very good. But when life gives you limes. Um, <laughs> how are you? I'm good. I'm uh, tired of our smoky season in the Pacific Northwest. Wildfire season. Yeah, wildfire season. You know, that delightful time between spring and fall. It's really great. I love getting out there and enjoying the brown snot that comes with it. It's really great. That campfire musk. Mmm, delicious. Yeah, you know, you just keep your windows closed and use a lot of saline spray, I guess. It's not awesome. Have your inhaler ready if you're anything like me or my mother. Yeah, there are a lot of asthma warnings out there right now. A lot of asthma warnings. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you're sensitive to uh, things and particles in the air, I might recommend you stay inside with an air <laughs> purifier. Like, really? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah, I think we might actually have like a thunderstorm this afternoon, which is not normal for us. So that'll be a lot of fun when you've got dry grass everywhere. I'm crossing your fingers on like the thunderstorm and less on the lightning part. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can take some rain with the thunder if we can't get rid of the lightning, but just the, the water. Could take some rain right now. Could take some rain. Could take some nice. rain. Yep. But other than that, you know, it's fine. Just waiting for fall because I hate the summer. I had somebody order my first pumpkin spice latte of the season <sighs> yesterday at the coffee shop, and it was really special. I'm glad that the season has finally arrived. Yes, it has. I rolled into, I can't even say my local Starbucks because like you can't have a local Starbucks. No. <laughs> but I rolled into the one that is on the way to work. Nice. Which happens to be a drive through on a very busy street. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, it's early and damn, this line is long. Like mm -hmm. it, it rolled out onto the street and I was like, what the fuck is going on? It's too early for this. And then I looked at the menu and I was like, ah, oh, it's the first day of pumpkin spice. That's why we're all here. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm doing so, it. I got some so, pumpkin spice in my Americano. Absolutely. As you should. So I cannot speak for Starbucks. I don't work for Starbucks, nor can I actually get Starbucks in this town. But for anybody who wants pumpkin spice, you too can have pumpkin spice. It comes in a bottle from a really nice company called Monin. Hmm. And you just get a giant bottle <laughs> and it says pumpkin spice on it. Nice. Might I recommend two pumps of pumpkin spice syrup for a cup of coffee? <laughs> I mean, I just came home and made my own. It's true. I can also make it with, what is it, nutmeg and cinnamon and cloves and a little ginger? Yeah, I just made it with pumpkin. That's true. That's that, that's <laughs> true. You can also just make it with pumpkin. Pumpkin, brown sugar, water, and then spices. Yeah, you can also do that. Because I absolutely just have cans of pumpkin in the cabinet at all times. <laughs> Let's not talk about how I already know that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> For those of you who are new to Emily and my shenanigans, we have lived together many, many times through, through, these, last, through these last two moves. cities. <laughs> Two cities, what, four years ish? Yeah. Yeah. And I've, we've been friends now for going on, gosh, 10 years. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. But yeah, no, you having cans of pumpkin in the, in the pantry does not surprise me in the least. Not at all. <laughs> mm -mm. Shouldn't surprise anyone. But pumpkin spice season should be for everybody. There is syrup. You can make it yourself at home. You can have the spice blends. Bring pumpkin spice into your life year round. You can, I believe in your powers. <laughs> Everyone should go to a company, well, I guess if you're in the U.S., it's called Penzies, P-E-N-Z-E-Y-S, if you want to order spice blends. They are amazing, and they also are anti-Republican, <laughs> and they regularly run sales based on 
Republicans getting indicted for crimes. So there are a lot of sales. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a fun spin on it. It is. So they, there's all sorts of spice blends. They'll do salt-free, sugar-free. They've got baking, chili, cinnamons, curries, herbs and herb blends and peppers and like taco seasonings and salt rubs and blends and soup bases and vanilla, vanilla beans, pots, all sorts of shit. And wow, amazing. Anyway, so. Well, I'm sold. Days. Yeah. I don't know if they do international shipping, but you should eh. you check it out. Today, I made chili, which also shouldn't surprise anybody on this podcast. And I had to send out my beloved fella because we were out of cumin. <laughs> mm. And in case you're wondering, cumin is the spice that makes chili taste like chili. Yep. <laughs> Otherwise, it just tastes like beans. Yeah, it's not the same. So yeah, but we had to go get, get more cumin. But luckily for me, the store was still open. So rad. I could eat some chili. Well, it's too hot right now. But yes. Anyway, that's uh, Spice Corner <laughs> with Pack Dynamics. This is <laughs> season one, episode six, Heart Monitor. The quick rundown is Scott begs Derek to teach him to control his transformation so that he doesn't accidentally hurt his girlfriend, Allison. But should Scott trust Derek? This aired July 4th, 2011. So we got another rousing cold open for an episode of Scott, I think, looking for the car after getting groceries. Yeah. Although this is a pretty big parking garage for Beacon Hills. The thought of parking in a parking garage to get groceries feels distinctly LA to me. It did. It really did. I was like, so this is being filmed in LA or Vancouver? This is not in a small town. Did he decide to drive south to Los Angeles for his groceries? Is he parking on top of the Ralphs? Is that where he is right now? Totally. I was like, so is he at Ralph's? Like, where the hell is he? Is he is at he the, the mall? Target parking garage? Like, are you, are you okay? <laughs> like four floors of parking that nobody else was in. No, it that was, was abandoned. It was, yeah, it was full but abandoned. Yeah. And Scott's just, he's starting so innocently. He is trying to be a nice kid and buy groceries. He is just trying to do his job. He is trying so hard. Mm-hmm. And then he gets scared by a thing, which we then learn is... Derek. It's, his buddy, it's his buddy Derek trying to teach him how to be a werewolf, I guess, by running special ops training sessions <laughs> in, when parking he's not, in parking garages when he's not prepared for it. To be fair, kind of a cool training, like a way to go about it, because if he's ready for it, is it really training? It's true. Like he says, I said I was going to teach you. I didn't say when. Okay, so I think we're giving Derek a lot of credit here that he does not deserve. What are you talking about? You didn't think scaring the shit out of a 16-year-old in a parking garage was like a reasonable way to teach someone how to control their werewolfishness? Plot twist, I am going to a town that any of my fellow Game of Roses listeners will know very well. I'm going to a little place called Conspiracy Town. <laughs> <laughs> population me which i have stolen outright from game of roses we love i love gore but i'm going to conspiracy town i am totally under the belief that this is one of the things that peter did to Derek. oh sure absolutely 100 feels like i learned this from my uncle peter <laughs> someone did this to me i'm doing it to you whether or not it has any reasonable expectation of being of justifiable training Let's talk about hazing and how that's a generational thing. (laughs) This is generational trauma of werewolves. Yikes. And it just, it reminds me that soon Derek's going to have to be responsible for other werewolves and training them. And it doesn't go well either. Doesn't go well either, sir. Although I am going to give massive credit to Scott here because he is trying his best with an armful of very expensive groceries because food is expensive. It was also a glass bottle of milk. That like, they the slice fu- open. <laughs> what kind of bottle? Like, what kind of fucking... Gr- are you chopping at Erwan? Like, what are you doing? I have so many questions. But jumping on the cars to use a car alarm as a distraction was a great top of the brain idea. It was. It was a good move. Really proud. I also... I like idiot mentor Derek because oh, yes. he obviously doesn't know anything. No, he knows nothing. And he's like... Teaching someone who was bitten takes time. Like, how would you know? How many bitten werewolves did you watch get trained? Like, all of your family are born werewolves. Yeah. Do we actually, and he says that, I was born this way. Like, do we know before this that Derek was born a werewolf? I think it was assumed. 
but not known. I think but not is, known. Yeah. I also really love when Derek catches him. He just goes, oh, you're dead. I'm like, yeah. yes, sir. <laughs> Sa- Correct. Sass wolf. Yeah. Sass wolf. They, but there are some adorable very... Scott and Derek as far as adorable, bad mentor, silly goose can go. Well, yeah. And this is when he's like, you need to learn to shift through anger. It's the only way. No, it's the way you know. Mm-hmm. Everything that he's teaching Scott is the only way he knows. He has to get rid of Allison because she makes him weak. That's what he knows through the family and probably through Peter. Probably through Peter. It's that you have to use anger. Love makes you weak. Attachments are folly. All these kinds of things. And (laughs) buddy, I feel you have to feel really bad for this kid. Yeah, I do. I feel really bad for him. And of course, Scott promises to stay away from Allison in order to learn or to focus on learning how to be a werewolf smash cut to him making out with Allison. God, this was just unbelievably good. Like it was that, a really good cut. That was a really good cut. And also, let me tell you, MTV is thumbs up gold star to its audience. Whew. Whew. Yeah, it was good. It was great. Till Kate ruins it. Till Kate ruins it. Also, my notes say that I had some feelings before the smash cut. So Teen Wolf is infamous, especially in season one, for its unbelievable product placement. Oh, so yeah. Derek like shoves the phone in Scott's face and it's like Blackberry. Like, cool. Thank you. <laughs> I did love the Blackberries. Do you want to live? Do you want to protect your friends? Derek, do you think Scott has friends? <laughs> he's, he's got one. How many friends does Scott have, Derek? Who are we looking to protect? Huh? Just the one. I'm having a lot of feelings about this. Okay, please continue. Kate ruins Scott <laughs> and Allison make it out. And it's very upsetting for everyone involved, including me. <laughs> yeah. Although you, I do give Allison credit for how quickly she's just like, oh, a book report. Yeah, she was like, and, and here we go. Really focuses on this family legend of La Bête de Javardon that what Kate does brings it look up. Like it looks like a wolf. Yeah, and the whole time Scott is just in his underwear. In oh, I think he's probably I don't think he took his pants off, but he's just hiding in the closet while Allison is like, oh yeah, I'm gonna listen to French lore. I'm really interested in French lore that has to do with killing giant wolves. Yep. Huh. As the wolf in her closet is like, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Run away. It is another instance of Kate Argent like giving her the medallion with the wolf on it and now right. being like, here's some lore. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. There's stuff going on in the family. I'm not going to tell you it outright, but I am going to give you really heavy clues as to what's going on because it's time that you learned a little something about your family Mm -hmm. also let's shout out to the unbelievably sad foreshadowing that i don't think was foreshadowing when they wrote this allison's talking about like i'm not gonna be the kind of girl who tells her dad that i hate him and i wish he was dead but i hate him and i wish he was dead oops and i listened to that i'm like and he's the only one who survives (laughs) that's such a bummer whoops (laughs) whoops <laughs> rip <laughs> also side note i'm very sorry if i'm spoiling things for anybody who's listening the show has been out for 12 years i'm really the show sorry it's 12 years old i'm really really sorry and the movie is older <laughs> it's true the movie is older the movie has nothing to do with the show absolutely not except that's how they get the name styles i think is that's and scott mccall that's really the only <laughs> Yeah. So w- there's a lot of like lore in in the Steric fandom. I cannot talk about any fandom that Scott is in because I don't read those fics. So if anybody who's like a big Scott and Styles or Scott and Allison person can confirm this, but there's a lot of lore about Derek like sneaking in and out of windows. But mm. in, so far, Scott has really been the one going in and out of windows. Scott sneaks in and out of Allison's room all the time. I think it's yeah. I mean. Having not read a single non steric fic, I mean it's it's gotta I uh, it's gotta have to do with like teenage romance and all of the tropes around it and the bad boy character sneaking into a window and yeah and even like you remember in Scream? Do you ever see you saw Scream right? I've seen no, you like wouldn't have. You don't. It. I was gonna say you don't watch Scream movies. I've seen like half of it. <laughs> yeah. So the main bad guy spoilers for scream spoilers for scream the masked creature well yeah sydney's boyfriend 
climbs into her window as well. Like it's always the the guy coming into the window of like the love interest, right? So I think that's why Derek is the one always climbing into Styles' window is that he's like the love interest. Yeah. But Scott is and like Derek shows up in people's rooms all the time that we'll see a little later. He just mm-hmm. we don't know we don't see him getting into that room. We just know that he's there. But Scott is like straight up like <laughs> running out of Allison's window, like jumping Ooh, out the window, right. like going on the roof, like and he's such a cutie. He is just so he's so cute. He is yes. just so in love. He's such a he's such a goofy cutie, and I love him so much. Unfortunately, the alpha is also there. True facts. Drawing the little spiral in the condensation on Scott's windshield. So I have questions. Yes. Learning what we do about the spiral in this episode. Mm-hmm. Why does the Alpha draw the spiral towards Scott? I think only for the audience. I think so. (laughs) I think it is only for the audience to be like, what's that mystery symbol? And like, they bring it up a little bit later about the spiral. And Scott points out like, you buried Laura under a spiral. What does it mean? I am also curious. Mm Mm-hmm. Again, I don't think the writers knew what they were doing in the beginning. Rats. I keep trying to I keep trying to connect things and it just I think they were like, "Hey, cool symbolism. Let's work it out as we go." Yeah. So, yeah. some very lovely, very spooky creek. That's yikes. <laughs> but speaking of sexy love interests, Scott finally makes it home and he's like, oh, thank God. And then Derek's in his room. Yeah. I mean, for some of us, that would be awesome, but not so much for Scott. In this moment, this is not what Scott is looking for. You know what? Season five, season six, Scott may be very (laughs) pleased to have Derek in this moment. But in this moment, not happening. Not into it. How does Derek know that Scott saw the alpha? I don't know. Maybe he can, can he smell him? But he doesn't say that. So he was, Derek is waiting for Scott in the bedroom and he's immediately like, what was the alpha like? How did you blah, blah, blah. And I, how did, how did you know though? He just got back from Allison's. He didn't talk to you. Like, why are you even there? Like, were you also there? What the fuck? How did you know? I don't know. This episode in particular has a lot of, people connecting two things together and there's a very important missing piece in the middle yes it happens a few times in this episode and it's really frustrating it's Um, very frustrating but yeah what did you say no we had a nice conversation about the weather sass sass master Mm -hmm. and this is so scott or Derek tries to get scott to like what did you feel like try to get him to use his senses without having yet taught him how to use his senses? And it's almost like this scene is out of place in the episode. Yeah, it is. It feels really out of place. Yeah. Like this needs to happen 30 minutes from now when he spent more time honing his wolf senses of yeah. use your ears, use your skin. I don't fucking know. Yeah. <laughs> feel the vibe. And what was the alpha's vibe? <laughs> growly his vibe was growly his vibe was angry so scott says that he was angry but in like a general sense he was angry but not at me it's like yeah. okay that's good let's it's like a therapist like let's go from there let's let's dig into that you've brought in a new word to the conversation <laughs> anger on the feel wheel let's move out from anger what else do we see you can't ask me to trust you like You have, you do. You have to, buddy. He's been asking you to trust him for five episodes now. Okay, that is another problem I have with this whole episode, though, is it's like, it's time to trust Derek. I know, I actually have no idea how much time has passed in Beacon Hills since episode one to episode six, but it's like, tick tock, he hasn't done anything to you. You know, there's another creature out there killing people. You have to like, trust him or cut him loose. Yeah. So I am not being like that we haven't had a full month yet because I don't think I think the first full moon of the season is the pilot. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we've had a second full moon yet. So it's been it's been maybe three weeks. Okay, but still, that's three weeks of him not killing you. Yeah, that's three weeks of him not not killing. People have gotten married in that time. True facts. So like, get over it, Scott. 
Scott tells Derek about the Triskel. Triskelly? Triskel. Triskel. Right? What's the pronunciation on this? I thing? don't know. I always call it a Triskele, but I don't think that's right. Triskele? Tris- Ask a Hubster's over there. It's. I don't think he would know. Anyway. <laughs> Derek refuses to tell Scott about the spiral, which does not help in the trust factor. This is also to keep tension rising in the episode, so I guess we have to let it pass. I Deep sigh. Another point of tension in this episode that lasts for about 30 seconds is that Styles is mad at Scott as well. I have yet again so many questions. So why are Scott and Styles fighting? Okay, I had this question too. I think it's because his dad got hurt in the parking lot. In the last episode. Yeah, he got run over by somebody. And that Scott wasn't there to help? That is the only thing that I can think of, honestly. like I remember the parking lot extravaganza. And somebody very unfairly tries to run over the sheriff. <laughs> yes. It just backs up over him. Yeah. Not over him, but into him. And he bonks his head and falls on the ground. But like this whole episode, it's like Styles is really angry that Papa is hurt. And yeah. Scott's like, it's my fault. And I'm like, how, how? Is it your fault in like a physical way? Like you were driving the car? Or is it your fault in like a, I could have saved him. I should have been there kind of emotional labor yes. kind of, it's all my fault. And if it I really th- is, it's all my fault. I'm like, I'm using really massive air quotes here, but I'm not on video, so that doesn't transfer. No, I heard him. I have so many questions. Yeah, I think it's the emotional labor. It's all my fault. I think it's also supposed to like stack up stress onto Scott. Maybe. But it lasts for half of this scene. It doesn't even last the whole episode. It just lasts this moment of Styles being angry and saying that he still thinks that Scott is an idiot for trusting Derek. Uh And that they shouldn't go to Derek for advice about tapping into his animal side to get angry. Right. And that's it. Like, And then we move into Styles being the one to teach Scott about the heart stuff. So it's like this one moment to get from Scott and Derek being heart buddies (laughs) from... Scott looking to Derek to teach him how to control his animal stuff to Scott and Styles working together. But like, did it need to be this, I'm angry at you for about 15 minutes to get there? That didn't seem genuine. No. So the anger, because because I don't have a clear like line of sight, doesn't feel something's fuzzy, something's off. It's like a missing scene again. But Styles very clearly like takes it out on Scott throughout the episode. That too, he does. Styles is the one who like ties up Scott's hands and pelts him with like lacrosse balls. Like, did, did it make you feel better? Like, a little. Mm-hmm. He's the one who like sets him up to get beat up when he keys that guy's truck. Mm-hmm. Like, this whole episode, like, Styles is like taking unless out some stuff on Scott. <laughs> I mean, unless he's continuously angry at Scott for working with Derek along the way. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, just dumping his ass. Yeah, I don't know. But it's this tension does seem really strange and kind of out of nowhere. I can see if this thing, this aggression would really make sense if something had happened directly in that altercation between the sheriff and Scott. Mm-hmm. Like if Scott had sent the sheriff off somewhere and then he got hit by that car or if he – you know, had done something specific if he had gotten bitten by that by that, by that mountain lion or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, he got bonked by a car at a very low speed, like in a parking lot of altercation. No one did it on purpose. Like, but I think the thing that I have to remember about this is it is for me. It serves two purposes. One, it's that Styles still loves and supports Scott even when he's mad, mm-hmm. and so it just kind of adds to the layers of that friendship. Right, which is yep. important for story building, but also it illustrates how deeply Styles is affected by his father. Yes, and how when anything happens to the sheriff, how badly it affects Styles. Yeah, that's his weak spot. We don't really know why at this point. We don't have the history of Styles and like where his mom is and like the things that his dad has done and like whatever. But the sheriff is set up very explicitly as Styles' weak spot. And that's very soft. It is very soft. This boy loves his dad so much. He does. So, yes. And then, 
Styles just continues his reign of terror as being smarter than almost everybody else in his entire life <laughs> because he's like, well, I'm going to figure it out because we can't trust anybody else. Like, okie dokie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we go on to my second born daughter, I suppose, being just, again, the sassiest creature in the scene. Allison is reading her her book on French lore about the, the Bête de Jovodin. And Lydia hits us with a trifecta. Bored, bored, slipping into a coma, bored. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I, well, I, I would find the lore interesting. So I I'm would too, but I, I, but I understand. Yeah. yeah. But Allison is just trying to share some stuff with her bestie. And Lydia might recognize it a little bit. She sure does, because she sees a picture in the book that looks a whole lot like what she saw at the blockbuster with those big red eyes. Mhm. I have so many thoughts and feelings about that, but we will tackle them with a few seasons. <laughs> Poor ah, Lydia. Ah. Poor Lydia. Poor Lydia. So Scott is hiding in his history book from Allison. Yeah, Scott and spends Scott- the day before he gets his ass kicked just hiding from Allison, Jackson, and Lydia. Yes, he does. And it's adorable. Mm-hmm. I also really love in this moment that, like, remember, he's like, Scott's like walking through the halls and like, avoid Allison, avoid Allison, avoid Allison. And then Lydia actually reaches out and says hello to him, yes. which I thought was incredibly cute, but definitely felt like fandom. That Lydia and Scott are now bros. Yeah. It didn't seem quite right. But I'm not mad about it. No. It's nice Um, nice to have friends. It's nice to have friends. But no, Scott and Styles in this moment were adorable. And this is where we get Styles being a Star Wars kid. (laughs) I'm definitely a better Yoda than Derek. Like, yeah, sure. You're a different Yoda. Yes, a different Yoda. Mm -hmm. I can't remember how we phrase the Yoda phrase that he uses, but yeah. Yoda am I, or however he puts Your it. Yoda, I will be. Yeah, something like that. I think, yeah, yeah. Yoda, I, I, did, I didn't write it down, but well, because what he does is he takes Scott out onto the lacrosse field to beat the shit out of him. Sponsored by Under Armour. Sponsor. <laughs> That's right. Sponsored by Under Armour and a stolen heart rate monitor from Coach. Temporarily reappropriated. Sure. Because <laughs> he has somehow sussed that. Scott's heart rate goes up whenever he's going to wolf out. So if he controls his heart rate, then it will help Scott not wolf out. So really all he has to do is stay calm and he's going to test this out by lobbing lacrosse balls at his best friend in the middle of a public school field. During a free block. Everyone's still at school. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Just where everyone, anyone can see them, including Jackson, who lurks behind the bleachers to watch one student lob lacrosse balls at another <laughs> over and over. He looks like he hasn't slept in a few episodes. No, and he is looking he's, rough. He's looking rough. Yeah. It works, though. So his heart rate goes up. He starts to kind of claw at the ground a little bit. And then he reins it in. But he does say that the anger is what makes him feel stronger. And that he can't be around Allison because she makes him weak. Which is like the cop out that every fantasy or action movie has is like the love interest makes you weak. So you have to let them go. You have to let them go. As we continue to talk about fanon or canon in this and all episodes, I'm really pleased to see that sassy styles comes back and also a little bit of sassy Scott in this particular scene, Mm -hmm. staying calm, staying totally calm, no balls flying at my face Um, (laughs) styles with, I think my aim is actually improving. Mm -hmm. Would you shut up and put the strap on? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I just, like, even though what's about to happen, everyone knows it's going to suck for Scott. Mm -hmm. But they're just, they like each other so much. There's so much love between the two of them. It's just sass master on sass master. And it's adorable. (laughs) I don't know why it just reminded me of John Mulaney's My Wife's a Bitch and I like her so much. Exactly. My Wife is a Bitch and I like her so much. My Um, best friend's a bitch and I like him so much. (laughs) My best friend is a bitch and I like him so much. 
I'd like to clarify for the record, Scott getting pelted with lacrosse balls is not adorable. <laughs> that is not what I'm saying here. We don't recommend doing that to you. No, please whatever. don't. But it is nice to see that they are still working on their friendship, even though Styles definitely is still acting like he's mad at Scott. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which is fair. After this, they go kind of back into the in the locker room and talking about, you know, Allison makes me weak and I can't do anything. And they leave the the they leave the room. It's like, yeah, something stinks in here like it's rotting. Smash cut to Jackson. Jackson is rotting and that's not good. Nope. And but yet here again, I have more questions. Yeah, his neck wounds are not good. However, him hallucinating the wolf's claw crawling out of his mouth looked so good. It did. It looked awesome. Yeah. I have about a thousand questions. Yeah, me too. So, all right. Not that I think you can answer them, but maybe you can. I don't know. <laughs> First of all, those were definitely like the alpha fingers. Yeah, that was my impression. Yeah. That, those were definitely the like the finger claws of the alpha. I feel like maybe like a season three Deucalion Demon Wolf could probably pull that off. But like right now, we're just thinking about the alpha. Mm-hmm. How is Jackson hallucinating the alpha? Because it was Derek's claws who went in. I know. I have so many questions. Also, I'd like to point out, for the record, this is not the last time they do this with Jackson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get this scene at least one more, if not two more times, in various different scenarios. There is, like, of all the scenes to reprise, I'm like, it's a choice. Yeah, they do some weird things with this actor. But I guess, like, I'm looking at this, and my question when I was writing it down is like, is there a longer story point to this? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because if Jackson is inherently tied to the alpha, then that brings up a lot of really interesting questions. Like there's a, I'm not saying it's a solid fan theory, but we're going to fandom conspiracy town. In a lot of fic that I read, particularly the older stuff, there's a through line of Peter being Jackson's birth father. Mm, Right. And that would have been a really interesting story kind of at the end to tie those two pieces together. That if there's something inherently linked between Peter and Jackson, but Peter Jackson, <laughs> oh, different <laughs> Peter Jackson, Peter Jackson. I can see the TikTok or the Vine. I can see the Vine now. <laughs> First point: Fandom Conspiracy Town would be an excellent T-shirt, trademarked, copyright, etc. So, uh, write it down, Allison. Second point, how would he be tied to the Alpha if it was Derek who did it? Because it is Derek the Alpha, question mark? He is not. No. He's a little baby beta. He is, in fact, a little (laughs) baby beta, and he confirms this for us a few episodes ago. And, like, I also kind of like the idea of a transformation going wrong, right? Right. So, but, but, we never, do we ever... I hate making statements like this because I haven't seen the show in a while. And this is kind of like a re it is a rewatch for me. Yeah. Do we see this happening again where someone gets like clawed and that that was a really weird way to say clawed, 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 and then slowly transforming into something? Or was there something very specific about getting claws into the back of his neck? So here's the thing. I'm just making shit up. I'm going to actively go into explicit spoilers. So if for some reason you are like really, really, really not looking to be here with explicit spoilers, pause for the or skip over the next like you get a five second skip. Yeah. So you just got to keep going. So this actually does happen, but not in this way. It's very, very odd. So we find out in season two, like Jackson transforms, like he gets bitten, but it doesn't go very well. Right. Yeah. But have you seen season four yet? When they go to Mexico and they meet Brayden? Yes. But okay. like, eh. So Kate comes back. Mm-hmm. So Kate gets murdered at the end of season one. And because I think it's Peter who like gashes her throat open. But she comes back in season four and everyone's like, huh, question mark, I thought you were dead. But she is transformed into a were jaguar. Oh, right. Right, right. But it's like, if the claws go, you know, can you be transformed by a scratch? If the claws go deep enough, I guess. And so, like, that's kind of the the story they ask you to walk down is that Peter gashed open Kate's throat and the claws, quote unquote, went deep enough that 
she didn't die. She got clawed deep enough to not bleed out, but deep enough to transform into where where creatures? Question mark. Mm-hmm. So it is a thing that they bring back. That being stabbed with any amount of werewolf can kind of unlock some like werewolfiness in you. They do that later to Lydia and some other folks. But like they kind of set it up here, but they don't go all the way through with it. It's very odd. I don't understand. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for going on this sojourn. I can't steal the name Conspiracy Town. I'm going to have to come up with something else. We have to go to another place in which we believe things that may or may not be true. Bunker? (laughs) (laughs) To bring in Supernatural? (laughs) Is it fanon or should I be shot out of a cannon? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. We'll think on it. This kind of stuff just bothers me because it's like, did you even think ahead? No. And the answer is me because they pick up this idea. But they just don't pick it up in this way. Yeah. So, yeah, I have a lot of questions about, is there a longer point to this? But. It's like improv. Like, yes, and. But it's instead, it's yes, it's yes, but. (laughs) They yes, butted this whole show. Yeah. Well, sucks for Jackson, no matter what. He does go and sit with Allison because he's skipping chemistry. And he apologizes to her for being a bitch to her and Scott. And says that in actually kind of an emotional and satisfying way that it's about Scott taking over as the best player on the lacrosse team, Mm -hmm. which is kind of a through line from his parents at the parent teacher conference. Absolutely. And it's going to be a continuing theme from him throughout season one and season two Mm -hmm. is I want what Scott has. Yep. Poor guy. And I feel I can watch myself descending into the bunker (laughs) as I read through my notes because the scene kind of starts off a little cute. And, you know, Jackson apologizing and Allison doesn't believe him. And Jackson says, I want to get to know you guys better. And my little multi shipper heart went, Jackson, Allison, Scott. (laughs) <laughs> Allison has two hands. And then immediately after, Allison like starts to cower away from Jackson. Allison is clearly unsettled and mm-hmm. not happy at what's going on. Mm-hmm. And it turns out that Jackson is really interested in Allison's book. What are you reading? Everyone's interested in Allison's book. Yeah, it's a great book, except for Lydia, and Lydia doesn't care. Yep. <laughs> the only book Jackson has ever been interested in. Deep sigh. Poor guy. Poor guy. The Beast of Javadon, which is a real thing. Like, it's a real thing they pulled from Wikipedia. Yeah. I googled it, just as an aside. If people want to also google it, they didn't They didn't make it up for the show. Werewolves Although are real. They may take some more <laughs> with it later in the show. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> That they did. I was like, did they make this up for the show or is this a real thing? It's a real, the historic name of a man-eating beast Om nom nom. in South Central France in the 1760s. Huh. Mm-hmm. How about that? I don't know. How about that? How about that? But yeah, I was like, and apparently like the Kingdom of France used just a shit ton of wealth and manpower to hunt down the animals responsible for killing livestock and, and whatnot. So who knows what actually did this it was probably like a wolf pack or like a hyena who knows maybe it was a werewolf who knows maybe it was a werewolf and it was probably an over exaggerated phenomena of public hysteria right as legend does there were google had said there were like an estimated 210 attacks but it was like were there really an estimated number yeah was that a real thing or was that just public hysteria being like one cow was killed (laughs) Now I'm mad about it. 60 wild boars. 60 wild boars were killed. Actually, one pig died in a heat storm. So right. anyway. So we move from Jackson skipping chemistry to the whole team in econ, in economics. And I had to look that up again. I was like, what does coach teach? I was teaches forget. econ. Yeah, that doesn't make um, any sense, but all right. And so he asks a question, you know, who wants to do the reading? And the phrase comes out. Greenberg, put your hand down. <laughs> Cannon or Fannin? It's Cannon. <laughs> so starts just the never ending joy that is Coach and Greenberg. Oh, Greenberg. We hardly knew ye. <laughs> we hardly knew ye. And Coach decides for one reason or another to pick on Scott. And he is just being unbelievably cruel to Scott in this class. Yeah, I often like Coach because. I think shows like this need an eccentric adult, like we were talking about in a previous episode, just to kind of like lighten the mood. 
But this was out of pocket. This was unnecessary and just not painting Coach in a good light. He just decides to completely and totally rip into Scott. Now, he does it for a reason in the plot. But just like watching it happen, I was like, oh, no. Yeah. Like today, this would have ended up on TikTok. Oh, yeah. Because everyone would have their phones out being like, high school kid gets destroyed by, I almost said railed. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, no. That might be thick, but it's not here. <laughs> High school kid gets destroyed by teacher, you know, and have been all over TikTok. And then coach would have been fired by the school. And then Ron DeSantis would have tried to destroy the educational system again. And like, it would have been a whole thing. But Styles is like, who has stolen coach's phone? Straight up stolen it. And is watching Scott's mm-hmm. heart rate go higher and higher and higher and higher as he's getting yelled at. Which is fair. I also would have passed out from Absolutely. embarrassment and fear and yep. pure just... Ugh. like everything I, my everything heart rate horrible. was going up watching this I was like Ser- oh my god my worst nightmare <laughs> mine too mine too but all of a sudden it goes down mm-hmm. it slows down and, and styles is like what's going on man and he looks over and sees that allison has grabbed scott's hand under the desk oh. and they're holding hands and it's so cute it is actually really cute it's really cute these two were so cute <laughs> I have so many soft feelings about season one, Scott and Allison. Oh my God. It's real cute. They're real cute. And then it's Styles who flips on his, or he doesn't flip, but he is the one who calls out and realizes that it's Allison who brings Scott back and says that she is his anchor. And this is the first time in the show, and it will be oft repeated that people have anchors for their inner natures. That it's attached to something. Mm Mm-hmm. Cough, cough. Cough, 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 cough. So Scott and Styles are the best of bros, and this is so soft, and I love them. And then Styles, in his last act of I'm really mad at you, but like for science, decides to do one last experiment on Scott. Styles, please don't do this. And it's like, okay, so whatever happens, you got to find Allison and listen to her voice. You got to do this. It's mm-hmm. going to be okay. And he puts a key in his hand and just, just stay right like that. Just stay like that. And then Styles decides to key some random guy's <laughs> truck and then yell towards the guys like, hey, man, what are you doing? And Scott gets the shit beaten out of him by these high school kids who think that he has keyed their car. Yeah. And so Styles the entire time is like standing on the sidewalk, like watching his heart rate. Like this is for science and maybe a little bit for revenge, yeah. but mostly for science. <laughs> And it's going up and up and up and up and up. And it's like, oh, my God, it's not good. He's going to wolf out and it's bad. And then Scott starts to look for Allison. And he finds her and is able to just like blissfully wallow in the soft, dulcet, wave tones of her voice as he gets just beaten up until Mr. Harris comes to the rescue, question mark? It's not quite a rescue so much as what do you idiots think you're doing? (sighs) Which is like, (laughs) it's not wrong, but it's also like, your students, and also like, some of those kids look like they are 12th year seniors. Absolutely. These are grown ass men, but they're fully beating up a student. And Mm -hmm. he's just like, he's not even like, get out of here. He's just like, what are you doing? (laughs) No one gets in trouble. No one gets sent to the principal's office. He's just like, huh. (laughs) The fuck? Huh. Huh. Why are you on the ground, McCall? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, What are you doing? You fall down? what's up oh harris but (laughs) styles like show scott the phone with a big thumbs up it's like i'm gonna kill you Uh, for science delightful styles for science stolinski hey he's learning stuff left and right oh yeah and he's teaching scott it's amazing Mm -hmm. he's figuring this shit out from a happy styles to i was gonna say we end the episode with sad derek we do really so much sad derek (laughs) He's gone to visit Peter, who this is kind of interesting because like Peter is in some sort of hospital slash care home and the nurses are always surprised when someone is there to visit him. And it's not like they don't know Derek. He's been there at yeah. least three times this season. Surely he has been visiting this man in the past. Why are they always like, you need to get out of here? Like, can't people visit their family members or like, what the fuck is going on here? But Derek is there to ask Peter for a sign if he can hear him at all. Peter seems to be kind of like locked into his body. I do think that if the show were made now and maybe on a network with more money, his fire scar makeup would be much more like Harvey Dent totally 
yeah. face destroyed. Every time I see it now, I'm like, that doesn't look so bad. Yeah. Well, because his hair's growing over it. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. And like for yeah. the time, this was like a devastating look and wound. Mm-hmm. But also, we're just going to go ahead and just ignore the fact that generally speaking, I don't think if you were in a full coma, they wouldn't put you in a wheelchair because you'd fall out of the wheelchair. That too. But like, we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> We're not going to talk about it. And he's but, clearly not in a coma anymore. He's just like locked in. He's just locked in. And it's really not clear on how much control he has of his body. And are they giving him rehab? Like they should be giving him rehab even if he's locked in. We're not asking these questions. There's no medical director. There's none. <laughs> Peter is just in a chair. But Derek in this moment just looks so sad. He's very sad. He's so sad. He's so desperate. Like someone killed Laura. And his whole face like breaks. And I'm like, mm-hmm. pumpkin. Is it one of us? Did someone else make it out of the fire? I know. It's like, oh, baby. And this fucking nurse barges in. And it's like, oh. you need to go. Like, come on. But camera pans down and we see Peter's finger slowly twitch. Dun, 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 dun. So there's something going on in there. However, there is a note on the Camaro. <sighs> I have questions. What's the note? I'm going to the bunk. No, we find out what the note is. I'm going to the bunker. I, I, the bunker needs a name. The bunker needs a good name, but it's the bunker. Going to the bunker. It's like a freaking experimentation bunker. It's my tin hat. It's my tin bunker. Tin hat bunker? First of all, look at his leather jacket. The sleeves are so long. The sleeves are very long on him. Whose jacket is that, sir? It's his dad's jacket. His dad's? His sister's? Fannin's. Peter's? That's Fanon. We don't know. But those sleeveys are so long. Second, it's not so much – I like we find out later what's on the paper, but who puts it there? I don't know. Who puts this there? Who put it there? Who knew that Derek was there? (laughs) Oh, God. Maybe. I don't freaking know. Deep sigh. Also, it looked like it was snowing in the close-up. A little, yeah. So Derek goes to Dr. Deaton's because he wants to know about the deer – with the spiral carved into its side. Because that's what was on the paper on his windshield. He kind of like mm-hmm. unfolds this piece of paper. Yep. And like shakes it at Deaton. Because mm-hmm. he recognizes the spiral. Of course he does. At this point, Deaton is still like, I'm only a vet. <laughs> and says does, he knows nothing. Deaton says he knows nothing. Does Derek not know who Deaton is? I don't fucking know. I think he doesn't, but he does know that Deaton is lying. But, like, how does like, he not know who Deaton is? I don't know. <laughs> My name is Alan Deaton. I'm, like, the first big, very fancy advisor to your mother. I don't, yeah, that's what I don't, but I don't like, understand. I don't understand. These are one of the many things that's, like... I have so many questions. But did this come later? I feel like that was something that came later. Yeah. I was like, you know, it would be cool if Deaton... We're also <laughs> an advisor to the Hales. It's like, yeah. Oh. It, like, I have so many questions. And he just never knew? Yeah. He just never knew. But Derek proceeds to try to beat the crap out of Deaton for reasons. Yeah, that reasons. was also out of pocket. For reasons. Yeah. He's going to interrogate the answers out of Deaton, who I think he thinks is only human. So that does not go... Well, no, he no. I think he I think Derek at this point thinks that Deaton is the alpha trying to cover his own tracks. Yeah, also stupid. Don't you think he would smell that shit on him? Like that's what I'm saying. But apparently like they smell different when they're shifted, like it's a whole thing. I but think that's stupid. It's really dumb. But he's like as long as he's passed out, he won't be able to heal. If he wakes up, he can heal. I'm like, dude. <laughs> I also think that's stupid. That's stupid biology. I don't that like that. That doesn't feel right. <laughs> That doesn't feel real. Mm-hmm. So no, I don't like it. I reject it. I reject this fan. I reject this cannon. The cannon protection bunker. <laughs> the cannon proof bunker. Cannon proof bunker. So Scott appears, smash cut out of nowhere, to pr- to intervene between mm-hmm. Derek and Deaton. Like, what are you doing? Stop trying to hurt, hurt him. my boss. Don't hurt my <laughs> boss. And. So it's in this moment that it comes out. The spiral is a symbol. It's our symbol for revenge. It's a vendetta. Mm -hmm. And Scott is defending his boss and is able to transform and protect Deaton from Scott or from Derek. Mm -hmm. And Derek seems unbelievably shocked at Scott's ability to control himself, as is Scott a little bit, as he like looks at his own hands. And somehow on screen, off screen, 
Scott formulates a plan and tells Derek to meet him at the school. Yeah. And we're all confused. Yeah. This happens very quickly, which I'm kind of okay with because it was like, let's go. Let's go. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah. And literally this scene is, or this series of scenes is just a setup for the next episode because you have to get them to the school and you have to establish that color palette. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's this is just to get them to the school where Scott is going to use the school speaker system. Yeah, the PA. To howl in order to alert the Alpha to his position, as if the Alpha has ever had trouble tracking him down. As if the Alpha has ever had trouble tracking Scott. But he's going to call the Alpha to him. And a lot of things happen in these few scenes. Yeah, okay, but first, not only to him, but also to the very vulnerable Styles and to Derek. Yeah. So, like, he's putting several people in danger in this moment, just in, putting that out there. It's true. But, yeah, so we have be a werewolf, not a teen wolf, because the first howl is real pathetic. <laughs> and they name drop the show. This must be important. Yep. And the first howl goes off and... You, Derek's face. <laughs> uh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> yeah. An icon, a legend, an unbelievable legend. I'm yeah. obsessed. And then Scott musters up his like grubbly inner wolf and is able to release like a real roar that gets Derek all in his feelings. And like Scott and Styles come out of the school. He's like, I'm gonna kill both of you. Mm-hmm. And Styles' smile breaks his whole face. <laughs> He's so proud of Scott. <laughs> yep. And then it happens, friends of the pod, please give Emily and I a moment to process what's about to happen. <laughs> Are you thinking of the same thing I'm thinking of? <laughs> How cool it would be to have central hot chocolate. <laughs> Sorry, that's an old joke. So Scott is like convinced that it's going to work. And Styles is like hyping up his bro. And S- Derek looks at Styles and says, shut up. And Styles cracks a smile and retorts, don't be such a sour wolf. So good. The best line in the entire series. And... As I told Em before we started this podcast, I have a new through line for Teen Wolf. Yes. I have a new through line. If one of them were a girl, they would be Endgame. Yes. 100%. 9,000. Correct. Um, If this ship were heterosexual, (laughs) if if one of them were a different gender, (laughs) Mm -hmm. this would be canon and it would be Endgame. (laughs) Don't come for me. Everything about them is coded as a romance yeah like enemies to lovers romance this is just banter but it's banter and scott is so proud and styles is defending scott from Derek, but they're all joking about it Mm -hmm. and in this moment like the words are a little harsh like you know like oh shut up like it's it's like stay out of this kid and styles is not having it but turns out that that howl worked it did it worked a little too well worked a little too well Derek gets stabbed from behind. And, uh, blood just like pumps from his mouth as Rip. he falls. We hardly knew ye. Hardly knew ye. So I think a little piece of this that's important to know is that so Derek had kind of beaten Deaton up a little bit at the vet's office, and Scott requests that he bring Deaton along. Mm-hmm. So Deaton is like bound and gagged in the back of the Camaro, and Derek gets stabbed, and we don't see Deaton anywhere. Yep. Hmm. Uh-oh. And Oops. so Scott and Styles run inside the school and lock themselves in. And because my goggles are on <laughs> so tight, and I'm going to have to go back this and do it as a clip for this is the episode you're looking for. But I do believe through the window of the door, you get a shot of the Jeep and the Camaro. Mm-hmm. And maybe also the Alpha, but I think it's the Jeep and the Camaro. Because they're coded as a romance. Yeah. So it's a weird episode. Yes. Well, it's definitely set up like a mid-season. I mean, there isn't a break between this episode and the next one because there's only 12 episodes. Yeah. But it's definitely set up like a mid-season finale. Absolutely. A big thing happens. You've got new questions, big, exciting turn. Then you get to see what happens next. Yeah. It's definitely, this is one of the strongest cliffhangers we've had in a while. Yeah. And so we've we've answered some questions. We have asked a lot more. But at the end of the day, we are impressed with Scott's howl. 
Yes. And worried for Scott and Styles' safety, and we're prepared that Derek is dead. Okay, bye, Derek. We are <laughs> not prepared for that whatsoever. I'm not prepared for that. My firstborn son, Derek Hale, but sorry, dude. Really sorry. <laughs> yeah. He'll be fine. So much of this is just because it's so visually like the next episode. The next episode, if you haven't seen it, is called One It's One Seven Night School. And the entire episode is that like dark blue color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these episodes really live together. They really live together. It's hard if you start night school without having watched Heart Monitor. You don't really know why they're there and what's going mm-hmm. on. But it seems totally odd that they just lock themselves in the school overnight. So mm-hmm. they really do. It, it is kind of a one-two. Yeah. But Scott's found an anchor. We love that for him. He's not going to immediately murder everyone because he can't control the wolf. Yay! Good job. And we've been introduced to the anchor. We have not introduced the anchor, which is a very important, solid part of Scott's storyline and kind of werewolf lore as a whole. Peter is wiggling his finger. So he might be attempting consciousness. We love that for him. We're setting up Deaton as a possible scary bad guy. We're setting mm-hmm. up more things with Jackson. Mr. Harris is still around. The Alpha is definitely making moves. A lot of things have been progressed. Yep. Allison is inching ever closer to werewolf knowledge. She's getting woke. She's getting a little a little learned in the family business. And Jackson is slowly falling apart. Physically and mentally and yes. emotionally. Yep. Poor kid. That poor kid. I know. <laughs> that poor kid. This, you know, is it a trope? You know, it's definitely like he's the guy who seems to live the most not sheltered life but you know he's the star lacrosse player and he's got the hot girlfriend and he's super privileged privileged life and he's the one who is just breaking down you know what i would love to see a little more of it does jackson have a best friend who can support him through these troubling times (sighs) well we'll see he sure does he's coming he sure does have a best friend he's a coming He's already been here. I just want him back on my screen. I love Danny. Yeah. Oh, Danny. Oh, Danny. Yeah. We're learning a lot. And we've been introduced to Greenberg. Maybe again. Yeah. I think this was this the first. No. Was there a Greenberg reference when he was on the field? I think there was a Greenberg reference earlier. Yeah. But yeah. he's still around. <laughs> Greenberg. Yep. Oh, Greenberg. You little idiot. He's the best. I do love a show that has running gags i know sometimes they can get old for people but as long as they are applied correctly i do love a running gag i also love a running gag because that's the thing is it has to be a gag and it has to be gone just long enough for it to be funny again yeah you you can't hit it every episode Mm -hmm. exactly a viewer has to be rewarded for long term for like for longevity and for paying attention Mm -hmm. yeah it's for the people listening yeah like you paying attention with viewers like you. Mm. With viewers. <laughs> PBS supported. With viewers like you. It's an interesting episode. It is. I feel like this and the next one, are, it's a two-parter. Yeah, for sure. Which is fine. Yeah. Let me tell you, it was really hard to let the episode finish and like not immediately launch to the next one. Yeah, it's hard to do a recap when you've seen the next one right away because you're going to like go into it and you, yeah, you can't. You have to do them one at a time. Otherwise, you start mixing things up but totally you're like oh wait what happened no not this one. Oh wait yeah i did that with glee a couple times where i would like watch three or four and then try to remember which one was which <laughs> like oh shit <laughs> especially when none of them are filler it makes it extra hard yes <laughs> you're like and then so and so like wait no that was three episodes later like shit or god forbid there's a plot line that goes for more than an episode and you're like oh no <laughs> where are we how much do we know it doesn't end All right. Well, I guess we'll catch people in the next episode when they're still stuck in the school doing werewolfy things. Oh, you've got to do your your wrap up. Yeah. Yes. So, ladies and gentlemen and friends of all genders, welcome to this is the episode you're looking for, for my giffers and content creators. This is the part of the show where I've watched the episode and can tell you the things that you're looking for. So, if you are looking for some scott and Derek in the parking garage if you are looking for some really excellent product placement (laughs) if you are looking for that scene where scott and allison are making out Mm -hmm. and more aunt kate and allison the beast has a couple really excellent scenes in the media in this one another spiral 
more Derek being a creeper and sitting in the dark, sitting in somebody else's room. Those really wonderful scenes of Scott and Styles in detention in the chemistry lab. Lydia's slipping into a coma board speech. <laughs> Styles' is Star Wars thing starts here. Mm, mm-hmm. Jackson's hallucination with the Alpha Claws is here. This is a really big Jackson and Allison episode. Those scenes where they're sitting by the lockers. Scott and Allison being really cute in class with the hand holding that image. And then, of course, don't be such a sour wolf. Oh, the best. This is the, if you're looking for Don't Be Such a Sour Wolf, this is the episode you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Also, I'd like to point out, because my goggles are on so tight, oh my gosh, when Scott and Styles are going into the school to do the howl, Scott is just like going, but Styles is staring at Derek. Yeah, he is. (laughs) The entire time he's walking into the school and doesn't turn around until he almost trips. Mm -hmm. I'm having a lot of feelings about that. But there's so many, so many good pieces of content in here, particularly Scott and Allison, Jackson and Allison, Scott and Derek, Styles and Scott and Styles and Derek. There's some really, really great stuff in here. So this is the episode you're looking for. It's a a decent episode. Yeah. This is definitely one I would use if I were doing early season one Scott and Styles. I would absolutely be using this episode. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for listening to this episode. You can find us I'm wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to support the podcast and the network, you can find us at Patreon at patreon.com slash fandom on the rocks. Leave a comment. Come say hi to leave messages and we'll respond to them because what else are we doing with our day? And then we will catch you on the next episode. You've been listening to Pack Dynamics, a Fandom on the Rocks podcast. For more episodes, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us online at Fandom on the Rocks. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can subscribe to our Patreon account at patreon.com slash fandom on the rocks. Subscribers get access to ad-free content, exclusive bonus episodes, deep diving into fandom, and more. So until next time, keep your pack close.